First off, um, I'd like to introduce Jeff Clanigan. This brother is the founder of Code Black Films, and he is the co-founder and president and chief distribution officer of Heartbeat, Kevin Hart's company. This brother makes it happen. Let's clap it up. Let's clap it up again. All right. And I also want to invite up to the stage my brother King Wilonius. This brother is an AI storyteller and comedian. Um, just speaking from my own experience, uh, this brother is an inspiration to me. And I think the perfect example of what happens when a creative black person is just using the tools. Um, using the tools. Uh, you may have heard uh, BBL Drizzy, the Metro Boomin track that dropped. Well, he sampled. Uh, this brother, um, and uh, there's just a, a tidal wave of creativity that's flowing out of King Wilonius right now. So let's give a round of applause as he joins us on the stage. All right, thanks. First, I'd like to um, thank everybody from Dream Machine Academy for putting this together. I mean, this is a great event. Um, when I saw this come in my email, I immediately knew I wanted to be a part of it. Um, so I just thank the organizers for putting this together. Um, so one of the things I'm going to jump into, because we only have 20 minutes, so I'm going to jam through this quick. It's going to be like a jam session. Right. <laughs> Will, right? Because he's got an incredible story. Um, if Will was a 10-chapter book, I would say he's probably on chapter two right now, and he's got a lot. He's got a lot to say, and he's made a lot of progress since in the last six months. Um, you know, first, what I want to start off with: pre-pandemic, what were you doing as a screenwriter, as a, as a comedian? How are you trying to get into Hollywood? Tell me what you were doing. Man, just oh, I mean, yeah, just. <laughs> but this is beautiful, man. Um, just trying to figure it out, man. I was I was doing a little bit of everything, stand up. Uh, screenwriting, making short films, uh, recording comedy music. Like I got like literally like thousands of comedy songs, acting, uh, you know, working jobs, uh, everything I could possibly do to try to like flying out to LA, flying to New York, um, you know, trying to meet people, email people, like everything I could possibly do to try to get my name out there. And what were some, what were some of the hurdles that you faced even trying to break into Hollywood? Like, what were the things that... Man, it was just, it, I, I don't know, like, it, was, it just felt like, um, so I remember, I remember, like, emailing, like, an agent or a manager at one point, and they were like, we don't know what to do with you. They was like, you seem like you do a lot of different things really well, but we don't know how to put you in a box. And I was like, well, why do I need to be in a box? Like, can I just exists but um so I felt like that was like a challenge it's just like like people didn't know what I did but I'm like I do I just do comedy you know so so this is just an interesting point so when we think about Hollywood um especially the film and TV industry on the executive level it's there's still such underrepresentation. there are not a lot of black executives at the studios that are in decision making positions um I'm on the inside and I see it and I'm always, you know, I'm always been a, been an advocate. But what happens is that with the lack of representation and also what I'm going to kind of, there's two things here. You've got lack of representation. So for filmmakers, if you're a filmmaker or writer, it's very difficult just to break through the door and get somebody to listen. Um, the other thing you have, which I think has happened since the pandemic, is that you have traditionalist Hollywood execs who are afraid of technology. Typically when is a new technology happens, everybody's like, oh, oh, oh. Like even in my own company, Harvey right now, I'm trying to get everybody, like pull everybody with me, right? Um, I run the AI. So what happens is that people are afraid of technology. They're, they're afraid of change. So this whole conversation around AI, um, me and Will have talked about this, is that everybody's scared. Um, and what happens is that a lot of times when I'm in a lot of these rooms at these tech conferences and things like that, and probably will probably experience the same thing, there's not a lot of black folks in there. You can usually count them in a, a kind of handful. So 
going into the pandemic, what did you do? What did you decide to do to kind of change your trajectory? Yeah, so uh, I just, I really like focused on screenwriting. So when the pandemic happened, I was just like, all right, well, I can't do stand up. Um, can't really make films right now because everybody's separate. So I just, I really leaned into screenwriting. And a couple of things, like I just realized, like, don't be afraid to just put your work out there. Cause like, I started writing a bunch of scripts with my friends and we would meet every Saturday and Sunday and write scripts. And um, I would just post them on IG. So like full, you know, uh, stories. I, I literally would do like, like 10 pages a day and put them out and people were like, oh man, people might steal your IP. And I was like, you know, it is what it is. Like I was like, I don't really got nothing to lose. I'm just trying to figure this out. And then I started making like audio dramas on Clubhouse. So I did like 18 audio dramas on Clubhouse and um, all original. And then uh, got into a writing fellowship called Black Boy Writes. And so I'm like, yo, I've done, I've done the work. I've, I've been doing like uh, audio dramas. Like I've been writing, I got all this happening. And then um, at the end of the fellowship, we were supposed to have like meetings with like agents and managers. And so I'm like, this is it. I, I'm about to make it. Like, you know, I, I done did the work. And then the writer strike happened. So like literally, so I'm like, damn, like, you know, I can't have any meetings or whatnot. And then, um, you know, the whole writer strike was around AI. So uh, WGA was saying like, if you write, uh, uh, essentially I didn't want to get blackballed. So I was like, I, I was kind of nervous about doing anything AI related. But at the time I was spending like all day, like learning the AI tools. And um, literally I had, a, I had a, a moment, I thought to myself, I was like, all right, well, if I, if I put my AI stuff, AI stuff out, I might get blackballed. And I thought to myself, I was like, well, let me count how many checks I got from the WGA. <laughs> And it was zero. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Don't really got much to lose. So I just started putting out my AI stuff and it just eventually just took off. And I say a lot of that, you know, I have to give credit to Jeff because, you know, again, like having like platforms like Code Black, he, he really, he, he identified me and um, started putting my stuff out on his channel. So like videos that I got like literally maybe 2000 views on you know, they went on the Code Black channel and then they hit like a million. So it was just like a lot of times, especially for creators out here, your work might be amazing. It's just sometimes people just don't see it. So that whole process taught me to just really believe in myself to keep going. And, you know, hopefully you have somebody like Jeff that just sees you and is able to like amplify what you're doing. So I appreciate you for that, Jeff. Thanks. I mean, and you bring up a good point is that, you know, one of the things when you think traditionally about Hollywood is, where we've always had the door closed is we, is we don't control distribution. I mean, at the end of the day, distribution is the key mm. for content. So kind of to the point um, that Will said, I discovered Will online because I was on IG. I just follow a bunch. I, literally, I follow a bunch of, like, I'm looking for, like, new creators. Right. And I, I saw his, one of his videos, like, oh, shit, this is dope. So I just in, um, inboxed him on, um, on Instagram, right? But the key is in now taking that, like you said, at 2,000, how do we get it to a million? That's just, that's just another form of distribution. Um, but since then, coming off of that, Will start, now starting to get a lot of inbounds. People like, okay, who's this guy? Who's Will? He did an interesting interview, which I think was your first interview with Wired Magazine. Yeah. And you said something in it that I, I always, it sticks with me and I always keep saying, you said that, I think you said AI or tech, um, AI is reparations. Is AI reparations? Talk <laughs> about that. <laughs> That's yeah, you know, and I also got some beef from some from yeah. uh, from the hoteps. They came at me. I was like, man, this is crazy. I didn't. They called me an industry plant and a coon. I was like, I'm just out here. Okay, but um, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, this dude made a 30 minute video about. It. I was like, it really? Uh, but I, I think the way the reason I said that though, because I felt like with AI, it, it leveled the playing field, you know what I'm saying? So it really allowed myself to just be seen by the industry. So like, I didn't have to wait. Like, you know, I know we all got stories to, that we want to tell. Like, I don't have to sit there and wait on anybody. I can literally use these AI tools to create a sci-fi trailer, create a fantasy trailer, a horror trailer. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not only just from a creative standpoint, but from a business standpoint, you know, a lot of us want to start businesses, maybe, might not know how to go about doing that, but you can write a prompt of, okay, create my executive summary, create my mission statement, create, you know, a, a, a balance sheet or a budget or a marketing strategy. So now you're like saving time, you're saving resources, you're saving money, you know, you don't have to hire all these people and like, you know, any question that 
you know, a lot of times some people just try to gatekeep information. Like you could use these AI tools to get the information. Because uh, for a lot of us, it's really just, we just need the resources. You know what I'm saying? Like if we just had the right resources, we could move mountains. Like we know how to make a, you know, a dollar out of 15 cents. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I feel like that's what AI allows us to do. And that's why I said it's reparations. It's not because I, I don't want us to have reparations. It, and, and, and you know the the key thing too is that we said, I, I, and I agree with you on this reparations point, is that we're starting to see a lot of stuff come out on YouTube and social media and stuff like that. But the key the key really is this: is that technology is really just a tool to enhance the story, but it really does start with the story. I think what I've seen is a lot of people are jumping in and just putting in prompts, and you see some cool visuals, but there's no story there. Right. Right, so really what caught me with Will is like, oh, there's a story here, and I could see how this could be a movie or a miniseries, and it's one of the things we're doing with Lick Back Experience, which is one of the ones he did, is we want to develop it into a feature or a miniseries, but that idea came off of the AI video he did, right? It's really important to start with the story, not just to punch in, like, okay, here's some images, I want to say something like, right. because, that's what the stu that's what's going to attract studios and attract streamers are, is are the stories. It's it's yeah. good storytelling. Well, I would say I think a lot of times people just think when it comes to AI, you just press a button and it just outputs something. So I always use a, I use a lot of food and basketball analogies. And for AI, this is what I look at. I was like, everybody know how to fry chicken, but not everybody know how to fry chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so and and that and that's what AI is. You know what I'm saying? It's like anybody can write a prompt, but it's just like but. You know, it takes a certain level of skill. So, like, you know, I put in my 10,000 hours, like, you know, in comedy, right, writing comedy songs. I made over 30,000 images in mid-journey, you know what I'm saying? So, like, any skill set that you bring to AI is going to be enhanced, and it becomes almost a superpower. If you're great in marketing already, you put AI on top of that, and now you the Michael Jordan of marketing. Like, if you're great at writing, it could take your writing and your storytelling to a whole nother level. So you still have to come with a base knowledge if, in order to really, because these are just tools, you know? So, you know, if you don't really know how to fry chicken, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna eat your food. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. And yeah, you know, I think, you know, too, especially that stuff you're doing, you know, like, you know, for example, I work at Heartbeat, right, Kevin? So we do a lot of comedy, but personally, I'm a sci-fi fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a future fan. I want to see sci-fi stuff, right. but I don't really get the chance to like even work on a sci-fi movie, right? And that's you know thing with Will is that what the AI allows you to do is to really ideate and tell these stories that typically we may not be able to tell. Right. Um, and additionally, if you were just walking in the door pitching a story, like people are like, oh yeah, but when you see the story yep. and then you got an audience around the story. Um, that are commenting on the story. That's a whole different level in terms of in terms of getting in the door, especially with studios and streamers, that you can actually show what this story is. It's no different from when I think of IP ideation. If you think about Marvel and DC Comics, right? So if you think about these movies, they started with comic books. So the comic books were the source IP, right? So those stories started with the comic books. Why in this digital age, you can replicate that same thing. Through AI, right. and through videos and things like that. Right, right. Um, you've been on a, I would call a world tour. Like, so what do you tell me? All the stuff you've been telling, but every stuff you've been going into speaking. I know you're like oh, all over the place. Yeah, these the last month and a half has been like really dope. Um, you know, I've I, obviously y'all know about BBL Drizzy. Um, that's been talk about the Drizzy. Get, let's get the whole Drizzy. Oh yeah. Story. So I mean, the the whole thing that that kind of just it really happened like it was a fluke. Cause like so that weekend I was I was doing the AI Film Festival, the Pika Lab Film Festival, and um, the submission was due on Sunday night, and B, I just saw BBL Drizzy trending, and I was just like, all right, let me just write a song real quick, and I just threw it up. I didn't really think nothing of it. I was just like, whatever. Like at the time, I, I was getting like zero engagement on my Twitter. So I just remember the views just started kind of going up, going up. And then, um, but I, I wasn't thinking nothing of it because again, I was trying to finish this uh, AI short film, which we actually lost. Um, go figure. Um, but uh, I remember it, it, we, I submitted it at like 3 a.m. and I didn't go to sleep because I had to go to Vegas the next day. Got on the plane, it was uh, like maybe like 40,000 views or something like that um, at 6 a.m. And then when my phone died, I landed 
in Vegas, and when I turned my phone back on, it was at like a million plus, and I was like, yo, this is crazy. And um, everything, and then and then it had this moment. It went like the two million, a couple blogs picked it up, and then I, that was it. I didn't think nothing more of it. I was I started making more songs and whatnot, and then um, was out in, in L.A. for Netflix is a joke, and uh, Metro Boomin posted it, and I was just like, you know, I saw the the, the Twitter thing. It was like Metro Boomin made BBL jersey. I was like, that's crazy. Metro Boomin made a BBL jersey too, and. Uh, <laughs> So, I, you know, I'm just sitting there, like, thinking nothing of it. And then I listened to it, and I was like, wait a second. This is uh, best BBL in history. That's me. So, um, and then my phone just started blowing up. And then and then since then, um, man, that, that whole week was crazy. Because the day before that, Snoop Dogg posted me, uh, posted one of my videos. And then two days after that, Will Smith posted a song that I made. I got to hang out with Will I Am. Um, made, like, we made some music. And uh, I'm not trying to flex, but, you know. <laughs> Is this is my life now? Uh, <laughs> um, nah, but it's uh, but I, I was I would say one thing, man. Like, and this this is just for like for everybody in this room, just because because I feel like my journey is very similar to everybody's journeys here. Because literally three months ago, I, I would have been in this audience, same where, where y'all at. You know what I'm saying? And um, just just stay consistent, man, and just, like, really have faith, because, like, literally, like, within a span of a week, my life kind of, like, flipped, you know what I'm saying, and um, and it just happened. I remember I was out in LA. I was literally sleeping on my homeboy's couch or whatever, and, like, I was I was going to leave, because I was like, I ain't got no money, and sh shit is, is rough. Sorry for cursing. I'm sorry, it's children here. Stuff is hard. <laughs> Things are tough. Um, but... You know, I, something in my mind was just told me like, "Yo, just just stay, stay for this festival." And I was like, "All right, let me let me kick it." And then the next day, Snoop Dogg posted me. The day after that, Metro Boomin thing happened, and yeah. But I I'm just saying is, man, just just whatever you're doing, man, stay. Cause like for a long time, like I would see my peers in comedy just kind of take off, getting comedy specials and getting on, writing on TV shows while I'm going to a coding boot camp and doing all these different things. And, and I'm just trusting my intuition, like learn tech and like dive into AI. Even when the AI things are happening, like a lot of my screenwriter friends, they be like, they, we were in like a Slack group and they was like, man, AI sucks and da da da. And I'm sitting there like, but it's prompt though. And um, <laughs> so, so I say that to say this, man, wherever you're at in your journey, man, just like try to just, as, as hard as it might seem, just try to stay 10 toes down, stay focused, stay consistent, you know what I'm saying? And just have faith that things are going to work out because that's my testimony, man, like legit. Like I'm here now talking to Jeff, this, he's a legend. Y'all don't know how dope Jeff is, but like legend in his own right, man. Like, um, and, and it, it really just happened because I really just, I just put my head down and just decided to just keep working. Like even while the BBL Drizzy thing was happening, I was still trying to like, put out content. Like, I was like, I don't, I don't care what's happening. Like, I need to, and I had like a couple other viral moments. Like, I made this song called Beach Blonde, Bad Built. But, but it's, a, it's a tough, yeah. But I made that, that kind of went up. Like, you know, so, um, you know, I've just had a lot of moments this year, but I can only say this happened because of just trying to stay consistent and like working hard and then just having faith that, you know, I'm, I'm doing the right thing by the people. So, yeah. yeah, I think the th interesting thing about the um, the Drizzy situation, because I remember when you the first you did it and you hit me and you said, "Hey, this thing's taking off." And I like I looked at it. And said, I remember I said, "Double down on it." Right? Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah, go. yeah. You need to just do that right now yeah. because it was taking off. But it we may be at the beginning of a and I know you some record companies have been reaching out to yeah. you, right? Um, we may be at the beginning of a new music model right. because of what you created right. in terms of how to create music. I mean, right. that's that's where this is going. And we've seen some platforms come up where you can create music. But I, the record, the music companies are paying attention. The publisher are paying attention. And then and they're reaching out to you directly. And they, Will is doing all this without an agent, without a manager. This is, this is just people calling him because of what he's doing online. So you might have started something, especially on the music space. I don't know where that's going to end up at, but it's it's something. Yeah, you know, and it's crazy because I'm a comedian. I don't even try to be out there with the rappers and doing all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, music executives, they hit me up. Like, I'm John such and I was like, who? Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, 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 I think it's, again, man, like, I don't know what y'all believe in. You know, everybody, some people, I believe in God, and, like, you know, I just believe that. Yeah, give it up for God. It's cool. 
God is still cool in 2024. Let me tell you so. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, I think it's when it's your time, it's just your time. And like nothing can really stop that, you know, and um, I've, I've had great conversations with Jeff. Jeff's been like a great mentor to me, man, just to like guide me through this process. And like, um, but I, it, it's really just, it's, it's just that, like, I, I, you know, I, I would see, y'all see the celebrities that get on and they be like, just work hard and da da da. I would say one thing though, this, this is one thing I, I learned throughout this whole process, man. Just make sure when your time comes, you're ready. Get ready, like, cause that, that's what I'm at right now. I'm like, damn, I'm trying to play catch up with a bunch of things. Like, just get ready, get, get all your, your legal, get all that stuff ready because when it, when it comes, it comes fast and you're just like, damn. Like I'm in it, so um, yeah, just try to try to be ready, man. That's that's what I would say. I think so. I think we're running out of time, but what yeah. I was saying, closing is like um, on my way over here. I, I checked my LinkedIn um, page because I had posted about this. Somebody commented. Obviously, they didn't have a profile pic, so I immediately blocked them. But what the comment was, <laughs> <laughs> they got blocked because people, there's you know, internet trolls, right? But what they said. It, was some, it must have been some disgruntled artist. Well, AI is not art. It's not art, right? Right. So I stopped just going to block them. But reality, Will's one of the hottest artists in the country right now Man. because of AI. So you can't, you can't deny that. I mean, and so it's just going to keep going. And what I would say to everybody else is you got to embrace the technology because that's, we're in a digital age and everything is digital. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's everything is digital. You got to embrace technology. But if you, we're, we're probably the most creative people on the planet. Take that creativity, embrace the technology, and you'll create great things. Right. Absolutely.